Hello once again. Welcome to another session of Lesson 2. Let us begin with this interesting question. Have you ever thought about using the Bix teaching approach during play? This session will purely focus on the application of Bix, meaning that we will explore classroom examples related to the strategy. The first example will focus on viewing, speaking and listening. Here, a relevant example is that of dialogue as a role-played classroom practice. Our second classroom application example will relate to writing and reading. Let us say we have a young girl named Mpo, who you help embark on a journey to absorb Bix in her daily classroom and off-school routines. A case study on Impo is contained in the reading activity one entitled Impo Learns English Bix. Here, there is no dictionary or reading piece. The process is purely spontaneous without restrictions on home language use. The case study is designed in such a way that it allows you to naturally juxtapose Sasutu, Zulu or any mother tongue of your school with English. After the case study, you will explore a few questions in a think about activity based on Umpo's bilingual encounter with her cousin and friends. Instructing your learners to acquire the most important tool of mastering English is your second step. This is the step called the acquisition of additional words. How? Is it through the reading of English? Is it through ownership of an English dictionary? Eureka! What about bilingual English? Which comes first? Which question is the most important? Remember the parable of the hen or the egg, which came first? The answer is not of critical value, but the process is. They are both equally important and naturally interdependent. Just enjoy your omelette or scrambled egg. Again, we would like to make a confession. The answer is simple. Both the dictionary and the reading exercise assists your learners to accomplish the second language acquisition process. All these classroom-based contexts require you to apply the best English teaching approach there is. Are you confident enough to tackle all these questions successfully? The last step, during which learners can now keep a speech going in English without reverting or code switching with the mother tongue, is the greatest challenge to your approaches. This is where they can write a composition or essay without flinching or shying away from exploring their brain-based bank of English words. Here, you will navigate lessons using proficiency as your keyword. To close this lesson, can we harmoniously agree that proficiency is forever incomplete if the key educational aspects such as reading and writing are not balanced with the more social linguistic aspects such as speaking, viewing and listening.